All right, we are live with another Quick Tip Tuesday. Coming at you every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Today's topic, what I wanted to discuss is why real estate? Why real estate is a good investment? I love real estate. I'm all about real estate. So this is, I found this part a good topic to discuss. So throughout this live, I'm going to break down a lot of different reasons, but I'm going to just, just, uh, touch on them a little bit. I definitely want to have a larger discussion on each of these items because we can get real in depth for each of these items. So the first one is why real estate is a good investment is depreciation. I love, love depreciation. So what depreciation is, you can depreciate the asset you bought over time. So basically what that means, if you're buying a residential property, you can depreciate that for about, uh, I believe 27 years. And if you buy a commercial property with, which is above four units or like a business, it would be, I believe it's 39 or it's something around that ballpark. So what that means, let's say you buy a property for, let's say $300,000. The IRS, this is legal. The IRS lets you depreciate that asset over time. So for typical wear and tear, so this is an IRS rule. So let's say, uh, to make things simple, let's say 270,000. Divided by 27, that's $10,000 a year. So your actual gross income can decrease by $10,000 a year. So that's a write-off. So let's say you, you profited uh, 100K with that $10,000 deduction, your new income now is 90K. So that's, I, just, I don't wanna touch too much on that one. That's depreciation. The next one is any repairs done on the specific property, that's a write-off. So you don't have to worry about that as well. Uh, the taxes you pay, the insurance you pay, the utilities you pay, all those are expenses. So that can decrease your actual income for the year when you own real estate and you're renting real estate. Uh, with each, if you have a mortgage on the property, each payment you do reduces the principal. So a mortgage payment will consist of the principal, the interest, the taxes, the insurance, and possibly HOA fees if you have anything associated with that and uh, flood insurance if you do, other expenses. But all those expenses can be write off. So with each payment, you're paying down the principal. So what that means is if the actual loan you have with the bank is 300,000 each month, that principal is going down. What that means is your equity is growing and your principal is going down. So with each payment, you're building equity. So that's a huge plus. So if you have tenants paying for that mortgage, you're, that's another benefit to you. You're increasing your equity over time with each payment. So I always say the, there's a, the only debt you should have is other people paying for it. And real estate is, is one uh, kind you can do. Uh, the next one is leverage. You can leverage your money. There's many different ways. Uh, there's a low down payment depending on the area do fha you can put three and a half percent down and buy a four hundred thousand dollar property with only fourteen thousand dollars you can also leverage basically when you do a cash out refinance so let's say your property is worth a higher amount and you only owe a certain amount you can take equity out uh as a to pull money out and possibly buy another property. So there's def definitely a lot of different ways. And when you actually pull that money out, the equity out, it's uh, basically, you don't have to pay taxes on that because you're basically taking a loan out. And again, you take a loan out, the tenant is paying for it. So keep that in mind, leverage is key. Uh, uh, that's why another reason I love real estate because of the leverage. The next one uh, is appreciation. So real estate over time always goes up. We always have the hiccups. Uh, definitely, let's say for instance, like 08, 
there was a, a huge crash, but prices are way above 08 already. So over time, real estate will always go up. So if you're in this for the long term game, which you should be, prices will always continue to go up. So don't worry about you think you're buying high, you think you're not buying at the right time. There's definitely many benefits of real estate. So don't just focus on one part. You should take it in as a whole picture. So keep that in mind. It's a bigger picture to real estate. Just don't focus on one part. Appreciation is key. The other reason why I like real estate because it's in real asset. You can actually touch it. You can actually go to the house. You can actually go to the rentals. It's a real asset. So there's that's that's another reason because it's an actual uh, a real asset asset. So another great item that I probably want to wrap up with is something called a 1031 exchange. So what that is, so when you're depreciating your asset uh, over time and you want to sell that property, you instead of paying taxes on the sale, you can take the profits from that real estate and defer those taxes to later on the road and buy another property. So that's another way you can avoid paying taxes and uh, capital gains tax because real estate over time increases and that's one a, a huge way to avoid paying taxes i definitely want to have another full topic on that one because that's huge 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 1031 exchange is the holy grail yes it is so real estate has so many benefits tax benefits you just ha definitely it's a lot of moving parts i will if someone wants to get into it yes dive in but please learn as you go uh, I've been in real estate for many years now, and I'm still learning as I go. So it's the best education is self-education. As long as you keep teaching yourself and learning as you go, you're going to fall. But just keep picking up and keep going. There's definitely a lot of days I'm like, what, what the heck is going on? But as long as I learn as I go... I'm happy I went through those experiences because a lot of my clients... I teach that to my clients on the mortgage side and and, and any person that, that uh, comes up to me. I'm an open book. So if anyone comes up to me, asks any questions on anything, tenants, real estate, mortgages, anything, I'm, I'm an open book. Uh, I want to spread the knowledge because real estate has really changed my life and I want it to definitely change your life. So I'm going to wrap it up now. I'll probably just open it up for a few questions. Let me know if anyone's had any questions before I wrap it up. Persistency is key. Yep, I 100% agree. Uh, there was definitely a lot of uh, learning experience at, at the beginning. I probably have uh, Quick Tip Tuesdays on some of the uh, horror stories I had in the beginning. I don't want to uh, scare anybody. This is definitely... You should take it and learn from it and not experience that as well. So definitely, I'll definitely have a quick tip Tuesdays on beginning, the humble beginnings of real estate investments. Can you talk about refinancing out of a FHA loan? Yeah, of course, definitely. So once you buy a property FHA, you're putting three and a half percent down. So you basically at a 96.5 LTV. What that means is uh, you're getting a mortgage for 96.5% of the property and you're putting down 3.5%, which you have 3.5% equity. To refinance an FHA into a conventional loan, uh, time limits. So basically you can probably, if you have the equity, you can refinance in six months. So when you buy the FHA, you have a 3.5% equity if the property appraises at the purchase price. If the property appraises above the purchase price, you have more equity. So in order to refinance to a conventional loan, you actually have to have 20% equity. So let's say you bought a house for a 100000 you put 3.5% down, uh, that's the mortgage is 96 six thousand five hundred in order let's say prices stay the same which they never do 
you have to have the loan amount to 80,000 and the property be worth 100,000 in order for you to refinance. When it comes to investment properties, you typically have to have about 75% LTV in order to refinance a conventional. And the good thing about that is once you refinance, your FHA opens up again. So if you bought your multifamily home first, like I recommended that last week, you would have, you can buy another multifamily, but it has to make sense. Keep that in mind. It's an owner occupied loan. So make sure that you either improving your living, uh, more bedrooms, better area. If you have kids, uh, make sure you're improving your living and not uh, trying to take advantage of, of the system. I'll probably take one more question before I wrap it up. Persistency is key. Another great reason why to buy a multifamily first. I think that's on point there. So keep that in mind, everyone. You're welcome, buddy. Keep that in mind. Buy your multifamily first. Have a great night, everyone. See you next week.